General elections in full swing. Let's talk about it here on This Week in Missouri Politics. Join with the full panel. Too much to talk about to have a featured guest. James Owen of Missouri, thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Anna Beer Sutton with HRCC, thank you so much. Congratulations on your successful caucus. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Tara Peters from Rolla, thank you so much for making the time. You keep it on, David Stillman. Yes, very much so. Full-time job. Full-time job. <laughs> and Jacob Turner, first time on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, down in Cape County, right? What part of Cape County? Yeah, I live out in Jackson, uh, right outside, uh, right north of Cape there. With your new city manager. Yeah, we right. trained him in Poplar Bluff well to Cindy Mulder. <laughs> let's talk about the. Let's jump right into the big news of the day here. Come on in on this. This is, uh, this is the dust-up between the governor and the secretary of state. This is a, a pet cluster, gummy nerds clusters that I buy that my son Gussie loves. This is a package of airheads that you can buy from the same gas station. What, these are nerds that just have a bunch of probably sugar that I shouldn't let him eat. These are drugs. These are actually drugs that are made to look just like children's candy. Now, Tara Peters, I, 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 when I heard that there were drugs that are pot or whatever, some sort of a pot type drug being put in package like this, I thought that's not real. Then somebody showed me a picture of a gas station where I was like, no way, I know where that gas station is. It was down in our neck of the woods. Then I went and bought this, not far from my son's school. The governor has an executive order to I basically make it where you can't sell packaged drugs like this to kids. The Secretary of State comes out and blocks it. Would you have ever thought Jay Ashcroft would be the guy arguing for large-scale drug sales to children? Not at all. Actually, this, again, airheads, it looks like it's candy. So, um, you know, don't we have laws already in place that when we have other things that you're not supposed to even put things that look like, you know, when Mountain Dew and Pepsi came out with the alcohol and it was canned the same way, it's not even supposed to be in a certain location. I'm at the convenience store, so I am just... This needs to probably be taken care of. You know, and it became, I think the Secretary of State wanted to have some process argument about how you, it didn't meet some requirement or some technicality. I, I was trying to find if he's ever rejected any other executive orders. I can't find one. I, I almost hate for Jay Ashcroft to leave office kind of arguing to sell this to kids. You know, I think aside from this issue, which they do just look like candy, I wouldn't have even noticed, yeah. actually. Um I think you have to look at your legacy right now. We've got everyone's paying attention to these new candidates, and we have big races in November. And uh, there's only a few months left to really, you know, leave the, your memory of how you behave. So, um, yeah. I've interviewed Jay Ashcroft several times. I have a regard for him. I think he's an honest man. I, I, I believe on some level that he that he does believe his argument about the process or the little technicalities. But at the end of the day, I mean, if your argument is this is this is not an emergency, well, you know, Emergency room visits among kids have skyrocketed. If this isn't an emergency, I have a hard time knowing what would be. And you, I agree. You hate for him to go out after a very successful term as Secretary of State, part of a legacy family, arguing to keep this on the shelves. You know, I've known Jay Ashcroft and his family a long time, and I think he has so much integrity. Um, and I always say if it, I could trust Jay with my life. So surely there's got to be some miscommunication or something. I'm curious to see what he does with it. James, you've seen this before. I, I think you have um, some, it, sometimes they want one more hit, right? They want one more thing to be in the news. You, you, you lose a primary, it's tough. The governor says it's because he endorsed Mike Keogh and Mike Keogh went on to win. He, I mean, he beat Jay by a substantial margin. I, I have a hard time thinking it's just sheer pettiness, but uh, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. And I mean, when you talk about first impressions, you also got to think about last impressions. And maybe Jay Ashcroft is looking at this, and I don't know the details of this, but if you do this ban, and it leads to a big, messy lawsuit and it ends up being embarrassing for his office or embarrassing for the governor, perhaps he's just trying to avoid this being in some sort of calamity that happens in court. I mean, that's possible. Could be. Could be. I mean, Jacob, I, I don't think the old sheriff's going to too much mind if somehow, some way, this is this is what he has to fight over and the, and a judge says no sell this to kids. No, you're exactly right. You know, I thought it was out, I thought it was out of character for him not to respond and appropriately and push this through uh, and work on the issue. But you know, looking at it, it's obviously misleading marketing that the yeah. companies have put out. It puts it, you know, it catches the eye of a young a child at home. They see that that it looks just like candy. It's marketed that way. It's dangerous. It shouldn't be in the gas stations or anywhere a kid can get hold of it. Prediction time, James Owen. Does Cooler heads prevail. Do they go to that big brain in the governor's office and Evan Rodriguez and say, hey, Evan, go get some of these law books and figure this out. Do, 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 they, do they come together and find some way to ban this by, oh, let's say, end of September? 
ultimately, when you have a public dust up like this, you see people make their point. They get their, they get their, they get out there in the public. Then they can figure out a way to negotiate this to avoid that big court battle and eventually get something done that's better for public safety and better for the wellness of. Uh, I have kids. a better question that just came to me. Oh, what happens first? Does these get banned from selling to kids, or does Mizzou lose a football game first? <laughs> what against their first for their first game? I think I bet I bet they I bet that um I bet that gets banned first. Kenneth, does this get banned first? <laughs> or does Mizzou lose a football game first? And we're gonna take the old Miss game that I know you're conflicted and out of the okay. equation. All right, just thinking about Mizzou. I don't know. I kind of think Mizzou loses first. Ah, what do you think? I'm with Hannah. Oh, I'll go with the band. <laughs> do do. I love new <laughs> choice. I love Mizzou sports. I'm gonna go with the band on drugs the kids, but 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 it's tough. But Moon Choice the tiebreaker for me on this particular day. <laughs> Uh, James, let's talk about another issue that's going to be on the ballot in November. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, in Missouri, it's going to be the most interesting thing on the ballot. It's the abortion is, uh, abortion issue. The pro-choice folks have put up put up an amendment that would allow abortions to 21, 24, something like that weeks. It's a highly technical issue. Uh, in my gut, looking at other states, talking to folks I know, wow. this is something that is going to take a lot of effort to beat. If, yeah. if everything is normal, this passes. Look, I mean, you look at states like the border us, Kansas, Kentucky, they are much more conservative in certain ways than mm -hmm. our state is. And yet they have been able to uh, vote in a way that is not exactly pro-life or anti-abortion or however you want to classify it. And so I do think when you look at the suburbs and you look at Republican voters, people who would be Republican voters in some of those areas outside of Kansas City or St. Louis or even Springfield anymore, um, they're going to see that they believe that perhaps the federal government or the federal courts have stepped into the decision-making of their house, and they're going to want to see some limitation on that. It's much easier to say you're against abortion when it's available and it's legal, but I think mm -hmm. when you see that there is like kind of this kind of intrusion, where there could be an intrusion that goes beyond that, to when you start hearing some politicians say, well, maybe we should look at Griswold versus Connecticut, where we had a law uh, that was prohibiting people from buying birth control. Is that going to be where this goes? And I think there's just a lot of nervousness about that, and I think that's going to really dictate a lot of how people vote. Jacob Turner, I, I look to where you're from, the home of Peter Kinder, Mary Kasson, Dave right. Schwab, Wayne Wallingford, right. pro-life champions. Yes. If there's a pro-life part of this state, it's Cape County. Right. I still think this amendment is likely to do pretty well, and I think part of it goes back to the, the total ban, maybe a little outstep of where the average of Missouri is, but I think where, where that's probably not out of step in Cape County you get into the rape and says some of these more dramatic cases, and you still have the same ban. I do think even in places like Southeast or even Cape County, you're going to see folks take a hard look at this. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I know that local leaders, conservative leaders, are stepping up down in Southeast Missouri trying to raise awareness uh, to this amendment and do our part uh, to keep uh, the pro-life uh, movement safe. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how it plays out in different parts of the state. Terry, tell, tell me, I mean, I, to me, has always been pro-life. But I do think for your average Missourian, even your person in Phelps County, I'm not sure the law that's in place now is in a little bit further out there than where folks are comfortable with. I think a problem with the amendment, though, is, is there are too many details to it, right? I mean, it's just like the marijuana uh, amendment that came out. People went in there and all they thought was um, marijuana is going to get legalized. It's not just abortion is going to get legalized. There are other components of this amendment that has to do with any provider, any health care provider can pro provide services. So maybe it's not even a, a registered physician. I mean, there's a lot of language in this that I think this goes beyond just banning abortion. And I don't think that people are going to pay attention to that. I, I believe the state's generally pro-life. I believe they prefer to vote for pro-life candidates. Just, that's obviously evidenced by every November. But I do think the current law may be a little further out than where the public is. I think a lot of Missourians would agree with you on that. The issue is, well, I, there's two sides of this. So the issue is, is that this is the most liberal abortion amendment that has been put on in the entire country. Now, we're not talking about 12 weeks. We're not talking about 15 weeks. We're talking about viability, which the legislature gets to decide. But then also there's allocations and exceptions for people with mental health and physical safety. And, you know, I think everyone agrees we want to take care of women and children. The problem is, is that these have not failed in any state they've been on the ballot. Yep. So I think what we need to do is look at how voters are feeling about this. We need to look at our districts. We need to see their concerns. But at the same time, we need to show them how pro-life, how pro-woman, how pro-family our legislature is. They've voted for postpartum extensions uh, on Medicaid. 
they voted for early childhood education. They voted for early childhood tax credits. Um, you have Bill Owen uh, or Bill Allen uh, sponsor a bill to protect IVF. I mean, it's more than just the abortion. They're not an issue with the, the pro-life community. I think my buddy Alex Bryan and I are going to argue about this every Monday. I, I really do think there's a there's an opening here where the pro-life community mostly just screams at its own supporters for not being pro-life enough. Mm -hmm. When is the last time the pro life really went and talked to independents or even pro-choice folks to convince them that they should be pro-life? 99% of the stuff I see of the pro-life community is just screaming at its own supporters. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I think this is a great opportunity for people to talk to voters, hear what they're saying, hear what they're thinking, and educate them on the issue. I mean, Representative, Bill Igle carried more water than Missouri American did for the for the for Missouri Right to Life. They endorsed his opponent, didn't even call him. I mean, they, their endorsed candidate got about a, a little less than a fourth of the primary vote. I see what I personally see from the peanut gallery setting up there watching you guys is you're, it's never about how do we convince someone that's pro-choice to become pro-life. It's just screaming at people that are already pro-life to be more pro-life. Possibly. I like that. Short and sweet. <laughs> little Phelps County way. But, I mean, I, I, I look at the folks in the pro-life community, and, I mean, they, Mary Elizabeth Coltman, how do you become more pro-life than Senator Mary Elizabeth Coleman? And they despise her over these little silly technical that's over a congressional map. Or I, I do think if this if if this MM is defeated, then the, the pro-life community should beat their chest and say we're we're bulletproof. But if it doesn't, I think maybe it's time to try to talk to somebody besides berating your own supporters. Yeah, no, I I agree. We we we've got to do a better. Uh... We got to do a better job at getting out and, and talking about these issues and, and keeping our districts aware. Um, you know, in Southeast Missouri, we're very pro-life. You know, I'm pro-life. I'm a Catholic. And so I believe that, uh, you know, protecting life, uh, it begins at, at conception. Um, so uh, I think that it's just getting out there and staying in tune with the district and, and talking with as many people about these issues as possible. So prediction here, does the member three pass and by how much? I think it gets 60 percent. Oh, what do you think? I think it passes, but... I think the pro-life people will turn out. I think churches and organizations will turn out. It'll be narrow, maybe 52. Who's going to lead the campaign for the no? I think your churches are going to step out. Okay. Was it passed? I think it's going to pass. Um, I don't know. I'm going to go a little higher, 67. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I think I think 60 is aggressive, but I, I think it may hit that. What do you think? Huh. I, I, I believe around the 52 mark, I think that it's going to be very close. <laughs> and we're going to be voting on abortion now for the rest of time, right? Every Absolutely. three years. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about an issue once the kids are born. Uh, you're talking about uh, daycare providers in your neck of the woods. You've run up with a little bit of an issue. Maybe there's some movement now? Um, I'm hoping so. So last three weeks or so, our daycare providers across the state of Missouri, um, Dusty's a little behind on subsidy payments. So there's just been a ton of talk from the daycare providers. We just had another one in Springfield and Representative Melanie uh, Stinnett's district this past week. Um, I feel bad. Carla Esslinger is kind of walking into Dusty with she's a lot. Into of, a mess. She's walking into a mess. So it's not her fault. But all I keep hearing from the liaison and everybody else is that it's a technology problem. But at some point in time, and I'm not trying to simplify, but I mean, we need to simplify. John, she go cut a check, right? Have the person that writes the checks and a calculator and a piece of paper with A to Z. And you go and you write the checks and you figure out the technology later. The governor, during his state of the state address, all we heard about was daycares and you know, securing our future, and all we're doing is losing our daycares at this point in time. So I don't know why enough's not being done about that. Veto session, you have a committee hearing about this? We will have a committee hearing. My understanding is is that the education committee um, headed up by Brad Pollitt um, is going to have a, a hearing, and then we'll have all the daycare providers come and complain. This is sort of like what you like to talk about when you're actually accomplishing things that matter to regular folks. This is something that you're right. While there's a technology issue, go get you one of them checkbooks like you pay your light bill with and just <laughs> check, right? <laughs> Uh, it does it, it to a small business at forty fifty thousand dollars. That's the difference between staying open and not making payroll. And not. My Rolla daycare, uh, the MS and T daycare, and obviously it's MS and T, so they've been able to carry them along. And they should be good at but they three months ago they owed them forty two thousand dollars. Well, I tell you what, we owe some bills ourselves. We're gonna take a break. I'm gonna eat some of these gummy clusters. You'll be able to tell if we eat the other ones uh, by the time we get back to all politics here on the Sick in Missouri Politics. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right-to-work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs, and kills momentum. 
right to work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. You know, Missouri farmers have been doing what's best for their land for generations. After all, no one knows what it takes to feed and fuel a growing global population better than they do. So why are trial lawyers threatening Missouri farmers' best defense against weeds? Our farmers don't need to be controlled. They need to be supported. Keep glyphosate in our state. Show your support at TakeControlMissouri.com. Paid for by Modern Ag Alliance in support of Missouri farmers. Data captured by our state-of-the-art monitors helps us pinpoint the timing and location of severe weather more accurately and respond to trouble more quickly. Ameren Missouri's investment in smart technologies like this is one way we're improving reliability and restoring power faster than ever. Responding to trouble before trouble hits. That's energy at work. Ameren, Missouri. Welcome back. Let's speak of Missouri politics election season time. Jacob Jerry, we're not going to talk about this election. City. We're not looking to November. We're going to look to August after next. Tell us what your plans are down in Cape County. Uh, yes, sir. We're going to run for District 146, currently held by Representative Barry Hobus uh, in the Cape County area. Cool. So that's Jackson, part of Cape County. Where, where all does the district go? Yeah, we have Oak Ridge. Uh, we have Nell Holcomb. It goes all the way up, uh, right up to Perry County, uh, then out to Bowling uh, Bol Bol County area. So it's uh, Gordonville or no Gordonville? Yeah, we have, uh, we have Gordonville. So you're going to get all these great Catholic picnics to go to. <laughs> oh, he's so much fun. Yeah, and then, yeah. I'm I'm already a member of Immaculate Conception there in Jackson. So nice. It's, uh, it's my that's my crowd. Nice. You get some tips for Representative Peters how to win these things, or like to win a bunch of like fish, right? Uh, fish beer, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, how do you go wrong with being Catholic? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we look for the lit, lit Fish Fridays, you know. Absolutely. Speak it up. A new guy from uh, your husband's stomping grounds, Judge David Dolan. These would be a very good addition to the House Caucus. I agree. And you know what? He has been out repping HRCC since Summer Caucus. I saw him at the uh, at Delta Days with an HRCC oh, cap nice. on. So, no, we're so excited. I Scott County is my second home, and I'm I'm looking forward to Judge Dolan being here. And Savvy of him to keep you and Wes happy with the well, HRCC you know, hat. He knows how to think yeah. ahead. Uh, James Ellis talk ahead to the governor's race uh, this fall. You know, obviously, the Democrats start off at a disadvantage in any, any statewide race, including governor. Uh, the abortion issue, though, could mm -hmm. be something, and, and Crystal Quaid, I have to say, I was concerned. I mean, millions of dollars were spent against her to beat her in the primary. She won by a good chunk. Comes in with a lot of bull myth. A lot of make good money I've seen start coming to her campaign. Yeah. At, at the very worst case scenario, she's going to run an incredibly competent campaign at the top of the ticket for Democrats. She already has. I mean, I know that right now you can look at the Democrats and say they're in disarray, as we like to say about uh, about that party. But Crystal, someone I've known for a really long time. She's very smart. She's very savvy. Uh, she's someone who is going to be able to kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, weave this uh, thread through this needle. That's very delicate. I mean, if anyone's got a path or there's anyone who can have serious, who can show a serious, credible campaign, I believe it's a candidate like her. I mean, whether she's successful or not, I think she's going to really impress a lot of people. I, I think she's going to be a very qualified standard bearer. And there, there is a scenario, which may be a bit of a long shot, but there's a scenario where this race becomes competitive and she has a good shot at it. I mean, you can't ever discount anything in politics, right? Sure. I mean. <laughs> and, Rick, Rick, you've worked on a lot of different races, including statewide races. And if you're taking other states, let's use them as an example. If, if let's say, the, would Nicole Galloway get around 40 percent, something 42 mm -hmm. maybe, what would that abortion thing run? If you run a same, I thought Nicole ran a competent campaign. It was a, it was a professional run campaign. What is that abortion bump going to be for someone like Crystal Quaid? So if you look nationally, abortion actually doesn't increase turnout uh, in general elections. So in primary elections, it's different. But in all of the states it's been in, we don't see a, a bump. Now, it's a presidential year, obviously. Um, so we're looking at a higher turnout than normal. But ultimately, I think what it comes down to is enthusiasm. We have a bit of an enthusiasm gap right now with the sure. Democrats. I think Kamala is on a, a little bit of a high. Yep. We're coming off the DNC. We're coming off the huge announcement. You know, Democrats stealing the voices of Americans and picking the person they wanted. Um, but uh, I think I do think abortion is going to be tough. And I think it's going to affect local races the most, state rep races, um, more than it will statewide. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, the, the state is probably reached the zenith of Republicanism. I would say Crystal will run a very good campaign. He's a very good candidate. And I actually think, I mean, I don't know what that, that tailwind looks like, but I would say two, four points. 
you know, would, would be what I would be looking for. If, if you're a Republican candidate, I don't think you have a problem, but other campaigns, you show me two to four percent, I think is, a, is probably a reasonable bump the Democrats could be looking for. Specifically for Phelps County, obviously, Kehoe did very well. So I'm going to say even in the general, he's going to do very well in my district. Yeah. But statewide, you look at it, if you're Crystal Quaid, you want to probably eclipse what Auditor Galloway did and set yourself up for a bright future, similar to what Jay Nixon did a few times. Sure, sure. She's going to run a good campaign. Obviously, Cape County's going to vote Republican right. by a huge margin. Right. But do you think that there will this amendment will run better than any Democrat runs? Will it pull a Democrat up a little bit in Cape County? Instead of getting 25 percent, do they get 31 percent? I, I don't think them. I don't think it'd be uh, much of an increase uh, for our area. I can't speak to the other parts of the state, but for our area, I don't, I'm not sure how much it will increase. But I'll, all right, I'm going to ask you a prediction. I'm going to start with James. What benefit will, when we look back will your average Democrat candidate receive? State candidate in Missouri, what will they receive from the abortion bill? Will there be or will there be one? I, I think because again, you see, you don't see a lot of governor races and presidential races, as you pointed out. So I think it could be. Oh. Uh, I'll risk. I'll say eight ah, percent. So you're saying it's going to make the thing tight. I I think it's going to be tight. And look, I think you know, no matter how good of a race Crystal Quaid runs, Mike Kehoe is going to run a great race too. Yeah. So I mean, uh, <laughs> so yeah, those yeah, numbers yeah, are still going to be. Or Ashcroft. Oh, I think there would have absolutely matter. been more of. A, I think there absolutely would have been more of a path. Yeah, than Mike Kehoe is a very tough person to defeat. No doubt. I mean, I mean, I think Republican moderates who would have been a, a little a nervous about voting for an Eagle or an Ashcroft are not going to be nervous about voting for Mike Kehoe. Yeah, I mean, give me the prediction. When this when this is over, you're going to be in the HRCC war room. You're looking at what what's going on. What do you think the bump's going to be? You think it's really going to be zero? I think it's going to be something. It depends on the district. It depends on the demographics. It depends on is the candidate a male suburban man district. or a woman? A suburban district with a, a woman district Democrat. I'm really concerned about. Yeah. yeah. Um, we might see a point, maybe two. But if you look at the 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 IPs of ballot measures that have been on the last however mm-hmm. many years, you have medical marijuana and recreational passing, and our large guy still won. Sure. You have minimum wage, minimum wage, right, you know, right to work. All of it, right? So you see a pattern of voters choosing maybe the more liberal of the, the ideas, but they're still coming home to vote for Republicans. Do you worry that you're not giving folks what they want on a large scale? They keep voting for Democrats on all these issues, but they don't vote for the ballot box. Do you ever worry they might say, why don't we just vote the ballot box for Democrats? I think a lot of the Democrats vote in the, voted in the primary, so I'm not sure. A lot of my a lot of my election judges came to me and said that in the primary we had a ton of Democrats that were pulling Republican ballots during the primary. So well, that makes sense. At a yeah. local level, the yeah. courthouse, your presiding commissioner who was a great guy, finally retired, read a Democrat. Yeah. Phil Scott had Democrat presiding commissioner forever. Randy finally stepped aside. I guess a Republican filled his shoes. I assume. Yeah, Laura Johnson is well on the commission. No, that was Sherry Stites. So yeah. So what kind of bump are you going to get on this? What will Democrats Man, get on this abortion? I'm going to refer to Hannah. She's our expert on all the races. Uh, she says 1%. I'll go 2 You'll double her up. Yeah, You'll see her one and raise her one? I'll agree. I'll say I'll say 2%. I'm going to say 4%. I think folks, I, the polling I've seen, folks are a little more ticked off. Well, women are a little more ticked off uh, than, I, than I think a 1%. Now, will that transfer down very far? I don't know. But, and let's talk about these house races. Nobody knows more about the house races than you. Uh, Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have an enormous headwind. You have Trump's third time he's running. No one gets more popular. You have abortion that, that I think even the most pro-life person would have to admit probably a little further out than the public is. You have a hell of a lot of headwinds coming your way. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, you know, going into this cycle, and I've been trying to prepare people, we're, we are going up against a big wall, right? You've got Kamala, who's very popular right now, you've got a female gubernatorial candidate, and you've got abortion on the ballot. So in our suburban seats, which are really the seats that we're concerned about, um, if a seat is 60 plus percent Republican, we have great candidates, they work hard. That's not something that we're super, super concerned about. Um, But in these tough seats, these battleground seats, um, they are more at risk, I think, for this cycle now. And you're representing places you probably shouldn't, by all rights, be representing. You've grown the majority of places where it's very tough to win. It is, but I, I think the reason that is is because our Republicans, our people in those seats, they're members of the community. They're active in their churches, in their homes. You might see them at a t-ball game. They're just normal people. They're just your neighbor. And people this cycle more than ever want to vote for character. Independent voters, they might be with us on some policy. They might be with Democrats on some policy. But when you come to their door and you meet them and they want to share a meal with you, that's what makes them want to vote for you. We have normal people. Then you have like Jeff Knight, right? I mean, 
Um, <laughs> um, tell me about what where, where do you think? I mean, I would think a five seed loss, probably a good night. You get it south of five seeds, you had a great. Am I wrong? Not wrong. I mean, when you look at these, uh, you're representing a lot of places that either really never were Republican. It was just a fate of, of good work and the right candidate. And you're facing some that are just places, you know, frankly, Donald Trump has, has engaged right. independence, the voters in independence a great deal. But he's also left a lot of folks, at least some, at hanging. Uh, what do you think? I, I'm going to say plus or minus five. Where are you going to go? I'll go minus five. You know, less than five. What do you think, dude? In in far as far as like how this well, the House Democrats. Oh, I I think that you I think you can see a loss of five. I mean, I think you're right. I mean, I think you look at how the maps have realigned in places like where I know really well, Green County, where there's a lot more competitive than it ever used to be. Yeah, Boone County, where I live now, much more competitive than it used to be. And so I think you you start seeing those those alignments in places like that. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a natural loss. I mean, it's not for it's not for a lack of. You know, it's not for a lack of work or money or anything like that, but it is going to just be a matter of sometimes just geography. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that before we go, 340B takes into effect today. Today's the day. Happy 340B goes into law day. <laughs> and, and all the other wonderful laws that you passed, correct? Oh, absolutely. Every law that went into effect goes in today. Yeah. That's so um, we have, have to send I wouldn't be doing justice if Senator Justin Brown, you know, that carry 340B. Um, it's been a roller coaster ride, and we've got several lawsuits out right now that they're, they're trying to sue the state of. How'd you like to be the pharmacy boys doing with Mike Keel right now? No, Ooh. thank you though. Uh, <laughs> I'm just happy it's still going forward. <laughs> For the minute left, you won the week. Well, I think when you look at the fact that today is the day that the law is going to effect, and we have these initiative petitions that have not been gone through the final process, lawyers won the week. They always win the week. <laughs> How much bigger can Hatfield and Ellinger make their houses based off the legislature? We're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Speaker Elect John Patterson. He came off a great caucus. He's fundraising like crazy. He travels the state, and he is knocking every door in the district. He's knocked more this week than any other member. In the what a what a I think it's a tremendous opportunity, not just for the cogs for the state, to have a serious person like John Patterson. He talking about it. It's a talented guy. He's the guy you want to pass the ball to in the fourth quarter. Hundred percent. I'm I'm very glad to be working with him and for him. One week. I'm going to say Hannah. She's yeah. sitting right here. HRCC event was great. Um, I've only been to one other than that, but it was amazing. We got to go to the aquarium and do all kinds of really awesome things and raised a ton of money. So it's hard to say. Good job, He's Hannah. not just saying there's a big wall coming. They're actually yeah. doing the thing to raise the money. They're actually yeah. doing the things, putting their money where their mouth is. Well, we, I would say uh, Rep. Barry Hobus. I want to. He's finishing <laughs> drawing at his primary. He's, he's finishing out his term going in. He's finished in our district as someone who is very loved. And he walks in a room, any room, he can get along with anybody and figure things out. And so I want to give the week to uh, Barry. I'm going to say Governor Mike Pars. Uh It is bizarre. You have to fight so hard to keep uh, people from selling drugs to kids. But the old sheriff's going out fighting. I love it. We hope you'll win the week next week by joining us here on This Week in Missouri Politics. And happy Labor Day. This Week in Missouri Politics is sponsored by the Missouri Automobile Dealers Association. Amron. Spire, and the United Electric Cooperative.